Welcome to the Better Business Partnership webinar today, Intro to Net Zero for Business. Before we jump in, I would like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land here, the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation and all other First Nation people, wherever you are located. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders past and present and extend my respect to any Aboriginal people present today. Make sure my, there we go. Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Choi. I coordinate the Better Business Partnership, a business sustainability program funded by local councils, Karingai, North Sydney and Willoughby, who you will be hearing more from today. The BBP program supports businesses to be successful through sustainability. We cover the full gamut of sustainability, the triple bottom line. On the top line, we cover environmental aspects, energy, water, um, waste, and reducing single use plastic. We look at the social, both the community level and the staff that your business employs. And we look at sustainable purchasing, transport, and the business health, which includes financial and economic success. The team that delivers the BBP program to you, we have dedicated program managers in each of our partner council areas. These sustainability experts provide free tailored advice and support to guide you on your sustainability journey. The BBP program fosters a local sustainable business network through events online and in person, we have monthly educational webinars like today's to discuss a range of interesting and topical issues. And our next in-person event is in November, a sustainable movie and networking event to be held at Roseville Cinema. Let's jump straight into today's meaty topic, net zero. Firstly, I want to position today's discussion as an introduction, entry level conversation about net zero and the concepts relating to it. There are definitely lots of resources that we will point you to that delve a lot deeper into this area and it is extremely complex. So caveat today's session is going to take a bit of a bird's eye view. I'm not an expert by any measure. And so I will keep my commentary very brief. Uh, what we are going to do though is hear from um, our partner council, looking at three case studies, uh, what the um, councils Karingai, North Sydney and Willoughby City are doing in this area. Recently, we have seen local governments and municipal cities across the world taking matters um, into their own hands and often going against state and a federal government stated policies. But being close to the communities, um, they uh, listen to their residents and they have declared the need for immediate action and taking a long-term view, implementing initiatives and changes that will contribute to getting us across the line. And finally, we're going to touch on what you can do as a business or as an individual to start your journey towards net zero. So just a quick visual reminder of what we are talking about here. Recent natural disasters seeming so unexpected and uncommon, one in 100 year events happening within a few years of each other or months or weeks. So what is in a degree or two anyway? The global expert body in climate change is the um, intergovernmental panel on climate change and they regularly report uh, on the state of play. In 2022, just this year, in relation to Australia, the IPCC said the projected global warming under the current global emissions reduction policies would leave many of the region's human and natural systems at very high risk and beyond adaptation limits. And extreme events such as heat waves, droughts, floods, storms and fires have caused deaths and injuries and affected many households, communities and businesses via impacts on ecosystems, critical infrastructure, essential services, food production, the national economy, valued places and employment. Delay in implementing adaptation and emission reductions will impede climate resilient development, resulting in more costly climate impacts and greater scale of adjustments, reducing the risk 
would require significant and rapid emission reductions to keep global warming emissions uh, to keep global warming to 1.5 to 2 degrees, as well as robust and timely uh, adaptation. So, what is the difference between 1 and 2, 1.5 and 2? Well, quite a lot, it seems, as you can see from the table on the left. The devastation on impacts on environment, wildlife, biodiversity, and human health and wellbeing are staggering. If we remain within 1.5%, we um, uh, have still considerable damage. But if we go to 2% and over, we're looking at from 70% to almost 100% coral reef devastation, um, from 6% at 1.5 to nearly 20% insect species, so important underlying our ecosystems. And um, global population from 15% up to almost 40% exposed to extreme heat and extreme melting of sea ice in the Arctic, which we know has a terrible flow on effect happening every 10 years. So what do we have to do to avoid this global uh, fate? Obviously we have to keep our global temperatures in check, but how? So this slide talks about the difference between net zero and carbon neutral, two terms that you've probably seen bandied around um, in, the, um, uh, in the news, as well as in a lot of companies advertising and marketing, particularly power um, uh, retailers. So net zero is making a plan to actually reduce, so change, make behavioural changes, make capital changes, which have the impact of reducing greenhouse gas emissions to the very lowest, and then only then offsetting what um, is left as a last resort. Whereas the carbon neutral approach is not increasing. So leaving things as they are and trying to offset through carbon reject reduction projects, um, which, um, which might sequester carbon or they might um, increase the ability um, of the, um, to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the emission scopes, and um, this is a very complex area. So this is a, a KV at very, very high level. According to the leading greenhouse gas protocol corporate standard, a company's greenhouse gas emissions are classified into three scopes, direct and indirect. Scope one and two are mandatory to report for a net zero program. Uh, scope three are voluntary and harder to monitor. So the scope one um, examples, are obviously not um, comprehensive, but they include direct emissions owned by the business, such as um, fuel uh, or gas used by cars in the fleet, um, natural gas, boilers or water heating on premise, and refrigerants, for example, air conditioning or refrigeration on premise. Um, scope two is purchased electricity. And um, this is mainly through electricity or heat or steam and cooling that is produced from um, purchased electricity. Scope three emissions are emissions caused by business activities, which is everything else, everything from waste disposal to um, business travel, office equipment supplies um, is a huge list. So uh, you definitely need a, um, a, an expert to help you navigate through, through that. So into our second section um, of our BBP partner councils, and I must say that our, um, our councils are part of um, a much broader um, a group of councils that are all working um, alongside each other in uh, this regard and um, have um, each set targets that um, are in line with the IPP, IPCC targets. Um, councils are looking at their own emissions uh, to um, cut those within the next decade and then to encourage the community within their local government areas to reduce and reach net zero by the 2040 um, cut off date that the IPCC uh, recommend. So um, I am um, very happy to have with me, joining me um, 
three very senior representatives from each of the councils. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Marnie Kicken, who is the uh, strategic projects lead from Karingai Council um, and, uh, and the architect of, uh, of the um, strategy that we're going to hear from her. Um, Danielle Birkbeck from North Sydney Council. She is the senior sustainability project programs coordinator there um, and uh, responsible for implementing um, the program that she will talk to. And Peter Lyle, the sustainability team leader from Willoughby City Council. Uh, so I'm going to start off um, to uh, present on each um, program, um, uh, in some cases a case study from their net zero strategy. So I'll hand over to Marnie and I'll just click over to the first slide. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Marnie from Karingai Council. I'm very pleased to be joining you today. So um, firstly, I just wanted to recognise a really important point that Amanda's made and also to reiterate that, and that's to say that Karingai Council has science-based targets, and that's why we have a net zero target by 2040. So as Amanda said, the IPCC in a recent report has stipulated that for us to have a good chance of limiting global heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we need to get to net zero emissions by 2040. So that's the premise that we have at our council in terms of the effort that's required to move forward. Traditionally, we've focused on our own council operations, but in recognising that the, the target has to apply to the entire Karingai LGA, we've now extended our reach and I'm about to talk about a net zero community strategy. So that's a strategy of how we get to net zero emissions by 2040 for the whole of our community. So when we're talking about reaching net zero by 2040, it's important to look at our emissions by source as well as our emissions by sector. So if you have a look at that first graph on the left there, this is our baseline year for our 2040 goal is 1920. And you can see that electricity is um, the largest source of emissions we have in Karingai. And then that's followed by transport and waste. So um, in terms of our approach moving forward, we really see the next decade as being focusing on our energy transition. So reducing those emissions from electricity and gas. And we see that the transport sector, that will have an important role moving forward from about 2030. So EVs, as we have greater uptake of electric vehicles, I should say, that's what EVs are, moving forward. And we're starting to you know, get our emissions down from solar PV and reducing electricity then there'll be a really important role to pay for you know, the, the transport emission reductions. I think in a Korean guy too, there's an enormous opportunity for electrical vehicles because of the reliance that we have on passenger and drivers of actual cars. So there's not a big public transport network outside of um, the railway lines there. So really important to kind of focus on that uptake. So that's a bit of a snapshot of the different sources of emissions that we're working on. And just that point on the right, emissions by sector, this is a webinar for businesses. So it's just to show you that the non-residential emissions represent 33% of Karingai's emissions overall. So a third, a third of emissions that the business sector can help us with in Karingai. Next slide, please, Amanda. So my presentation is gonna focus on the net zero community strategy. First, I'm just going to touch base on it being um, informed by extensive community consultation. Then I'm going to outline what the strategy is trying to achieve, which is to support the Karingai community, including businesses, in transitioning to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. And then I'm going to talk about a key engagement tool that we're utilising, our net zero champions group. Thanks, Amanda. And one more click. So I just wanted to touch base that the net zero community strategy was informed by extensive community consultation. We conducted a community survey, we held several community workshops and we held several focus groups. So we had 600 survey respondents and 136 participants. And what really came through clearly from that, if you see in the top right hand corner, is that 89% of our survey respondents said that they feel that individual action is crucial. So not just council action, but individual action. And that 84% of respondents said that council should play a leading role in our transition to net zero. So that's a really good mandate for us to move forward with a net zero community strategy. 
down the bottom there, you'll see the top 10 actions from anywhere from rooftop solar through to cycling and walking, energy efficiency, right through to electric vehicles, EV charging stations, community solar and batteries and FOGO services, which is food organics and garden organics, so organics recycling. So that gave us a really good indication of what the community wanted us to do in terms of net zero action in Karinga. Next slide, please, Amanda. So just in terms of the strategy and how it relates to the business sector, so really across the whole strategy, council's adopting a shared responsibility framework. So whilst council wants to be a leader in the net zero transition, we recognise that we can't do it alone and it's going, to be, um, it's going to involve working together with the community, industry, you as the business sector and other levels of government. And that's in terms of action as well as investment. We're going to need accelerated and scaled up action way beyond current levels to get to our net zero target. The lion's share of emissions have to occur in this decade. And Karingai Council very much supports for businesses, particularly in relation to um, energy related emissions, the carbon management hierarchy. So that's about energy efficiency as a first priority if you're able to do it. Then on site renewable energy, so the installation of solar if you're able to do that. Once you've ticked off those two big ticket items, either buying renewable energy or investing in community solar, and then as a last resort, buying carbon offsets, which we'll talk about further in this webinar. Next slide, please, Amanda. So in terms of what's in the net zero community strategy and how it relates to the business sector, so overarching the entire strategy is essentially the Better Business Programme. And that's what Amanda and her colleagues run. And that provides all businesses in Kringai, as well as our partner councils in Willoughby and North Sydney, the opportunity to have a look at their whole business and how actions they might take within their business will contribute to net zero. So in terms of all of the different areas that we're trying to reduce emissions, whether it be in the energy sector, through waste management, or through sustainable transport, the BB program can assist businesses in all those areas. The other thing that we're implementing as part of our strategy is a net zero grants program, which businesses will be eligible for, which means that if you have an action that you've devised, hopefully through the, um, the BBP program, that's eligible for a net zero grant, you'll be able to apply to Karingai Council for that funding. So that also will be across all of the energy, waste and sustainable transport emission areas. And they're the three areas we're focusing on helping businesses reduce emissions in. Just specifically in terms of the, man the carbon management hierarchy that I just talked about with energy efficiency, on-site renewable energy and community renewables or buying renewables, we have business rebates for businesses. So that's for things like lighting upgrades, sensors and timers and the like. And we also for larger businesses have level two energy audits. So you're able to get rebates from council to implement those projects to improve your energy efficiency. We also have business rebate rebates for solar PV and batteries. And we also have a sunspot solar tool, which helps businesses understand their potential for solar. So that's how we can support you in putting solar PV or batteries into your business and reducing emissions that way. In terms of community renewables or buying renewable products, we are investigating a community renewables project in Karingai. So we're looking at the feasibility of having a community solar farm, as an example, and then we'd be looking at business models for that in terms of community investment. So as a business, if you can't put solar on your roof, you could invest in a project like that, which would be contributing to the mission reduction in our local government area, even if you can't put something on site in your business. So that's a way that businesses will be able to be involved as we further the feasibility around these types of projects. Um, for our larger businesses, again, we're looking at how council can support renewable energy power purchase agreements. So that's another way that we can support businesses in buying renewable energy if they can't put solar on their roofs and they've done all their energy efficiency measures. And green power is another initiative that businesses can do to contribute to buying renewables. In terms of waste management, within the strategy, we've got a line item to implement community organics recycling programs, as well as community recycling programs for hard to recycle items. So that's again, two opportunities for businesses to be involved in those organics recycling or hard to recycle items programs. By community, we mean business too. So as we roll out those programs, there's hopefully gonna be an opportunity for businesses to be involved in that. And finally, in terms of sustainable transport, we have business rebates for shared electrical vehicle charging stations, and we are also implementing a public EV charging installation program. So that's really gonna facilitate the uptake of electrical vehicles in our LGA, 
and businesses can be supported through those two means. And finally, we'll be, we have a, a program funded through our environmental levy for the provision of cycling and walking infrastructure. That, so that's about assisting people to be, you know, more active in our in LGA in terms of um, active transport, that cycling and walking component. So they're all the areas that we'll be able to support businesses in trying to achieve our goal of net zero. Next slide, please, Amanda. And finally, I just wanted to talk about our Net Zero Champions group. So we have 75 members on our Facebook group, 135 Net Zero Champions, and 600 on our Net Zero mailing list at the moment. So the Net Zero Champions are a group of like-minded community members, and they want to be involved with council in reducing energy waste and transport emissions. And we have four project groups at the moment, EVs and sustainable transport, electrification and community renewables, organics waste and composting, and a reuse, recycle, repair group. So this is what we um, are facilitating in terms of that shared responsibility framework. And there's nothing to say that your business can't get on this face, um, Facebook group or our Net Champions group, start projects with other businesses or contribute as a, a business within Karingai. So that's another means in which you can connect with other people that are trying to solve the problem and work with council, to be able to collectively reduce our net zero emissions to 2040. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks so much, Marnie. Um, that's a fantastic overview. I know that um, um, the uh, Net Zero Communities um, Champion Group has a, a couple of BBP businesses in there. Um, very exciting and, uh, and, and doing some great work in relation to uh, particularly the circular economy. Um, and um, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely um, the BBP rebates are fantastic going well. So any business in Karingai um, wanting to embark on any of those sustainable initiatives, let uh, let Min or myself know. Um, so I'm going to um, introduce uh, Danielle. I've just put into the chat, I noticed that there are no questions as yet. So please, if you have any question um, for any of our uh, council panellists or myself, um, but uh, I must say, if they're tricky questions, I'll take them on notice and get uh, and, and get them answered um, after this. But um, please put your questions in, and for those we can answer, we will be doing that after the presentations. Um, so I'm going to invite Danielle to talk to us about the North Sydney program. Thank you, Amanda, um, and welcome everybody here today. Um, my name is Danielle. I am the Sustainability Programs Coordinator from North Sydney Council. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about North Sydney emissions and how we are working to achieve our targets in our um, environmental sustainability strategy. So North Sydney Council has set ambitious um, council and community targets for the reduction of energy, waste and water since 2002. However, over the last decade, it has become increasingly evident that in order to tackle climate change and contain warming to that 1.5 degree um, target, our previous targets and efficiency efforts have not been strong enough to yield the dramatic drop in greenhouse gas emissions that are required. So in July 2019, North Sydney Council declared a climate emergency. And then in July 2021, we adopted our 2030 environmental sustainability strategy. So Council's environmental sustainability strategy sets out our targets in seven key areas. Today we're talking about net zero and North Sydney Council actually, we don't have net zero targets, but we have carbon footprint targets in our 2030 strategy. So back to that slide that Amanda showed earlier, we have um, our carbon footprint targets. Uh, the Council will have its electricity needs met by 100% renewable energy by 2030. And actually we will achieve this by January next year where all large and small council sites will be powered by renewable energy. Um, our council operations are to be 100% carbon neutral by 2030. And with regards to our community target, um, we have a 65% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. So thinking about those targets and looking at the graphs that you can see on the screen, um, North Sydney's emissions by source 
is probably like every other of the partner councils here. Electricity is our highest emitter, followed by transport and then waste. When you're looking at our emissions by sector, you can see that 24% of our emissions come from multi-unit dwellings, so our strata, and combined um, non-residential retail and non-residential commercial, that accounts for 48% um, of our emissions. And we, we uh, lump our business community in, in that um, emissions sector. So that's why at North Sydney, we've decided to focus on um, strata and businesses in our community um, targets. And we're going to focus on helping them reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide, please, Amanda. So what are we going to do in order to assist North Sydney community in achieving these targets? So firstly, we're going to prioritise decarbonisation through electrification. So we are going to electrify everything um, and we will have a campaign that will be launched in mid 2023, uh, mid next year for that. So in that campaign, we're promoting the switch to clean and renewable energy sources and hoping to rapidly transition our community away from fossil fuels, the use of fossil fuels, including coal and gas. And again, we're going to prioritise strata and businesses in that Electrify Everything program. So what will that focus on electrification look like for our residents. Basically, it will mean an increase in the number of households and businesses with rooftop solar, electric vehicles instead of petrol or diesel, heat pump hot water heaters instead of gas, reverse cycle air conditioners, induction cooktops and household batteries to store solar power. It's anticipated that the average Australian would need to make about seven changes or new electric acquisitions. Um, to enable them to electrify everything. So council are assisting our strata through uh, a number of our programs that we have here, mainly our Future Proofing Apartments program. So this program aims to improve the environmental footprint of strata buildings in the North Sydney LGA by identifying and implementing priority actions that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and potable water consumption. So council funds audits that inform a business case for a range of upgrades that strata can then implement. We do know that cost, cost of upgrading and purchasing these new acquisitions um, is, is often a challenge that needs to be overcome. Um, and so as part of our Electrify Everything campaign, um, we will as well be offering uh, subsidies and rebates for both res, uh, strata and businesses to assist with that change. Next slide, please, Amanda. Okay, so what are we doing to help businesses? Again, we're promoting electrification and getting off gas, especially through gas used in cooking, heating and hot water. And for those that can't install solar on their rooftop, we're promoting the purchase of green power. We also uh, advocate um, composting to deal with food waste in businesses. And we're now inviting small businesses to join uh, our compost revolution program. We we are part of the City Switch program for tenanted office space. We do also have the Environmental Upgrade Agreement program for businesses, which provides finance for environmental upgrades. Um, we too provide uh, sustainable transport um, recommendations to businesses and we have um, EV charging in five of our um, public car parks. Um, and we have the community recycling centre available to businesses in North Sydney for those hard to recycle items. We are also um, helping certain types of businesses and I'll say uh, cafes in this particular instance and other commercial kitchens through one of our new programs, which is um, our all electric cafes program. Basically, the program looks at opportunities in the cafe to electrify and in turn reduce greenhouse gas emissions and running costs of the business. So we've recently completed a case study on the North Spoon Cafe in McMahon's Point, who became the pilot cafe for this program. 
Uh, so the North Spoon Cafe are tenants in a council owned premises in McMahon's Point. And through council's solar for rentals program, a 14 kilowatt solar PV system was installed on the adjacent community center rooftop. Council also owns that building. That PV system now supplies the cafe with the, their electricity. So in the solar for rental scheme, the building owner purchases the PV system and charges the tenant a fee to recoup those purchase costs. So over the 12 month period, we found that the cafe used 91% of the solar generated from those panels, which covered 34% of the cafe's annual energy use. So that was a great first step in reducing the cafe's greenhouse gas emissions and ongoing running expenses, but we knew more could be done. So uh, we had a consultant uh, do a report on the cafe and they further recommended that the cafe switch their cooking equipment to induction, their hot water to heat pump, and then install more solar PV on the cafe roof if that was possible. In addition to that, council uh, has purchased leading food and beverage retailer Brain and Poulter's guide to cooking without gas. And we are now sharing that with the commercial kitchens in our local government area. It clearly sets out the business case for going all electric in the kitchen and getting off gas, including cost comparisons of various pieces of kitchen equipment. Council has also partnered with Brain and Poulter for concept kitchen designs for those kitchens, serious about going all electric and we offer that service as part of our all electric cafes program. So that case study just provided you with an example of one of the programs that we do here at North Sydney. But as I did mention earlier, we do work with our businesses on trying to achieve um, a reduction in their greenhouse gas emissions in many ways. Um, we do have a a lot more programs on offer. So I do encourage anyone to, um, any businesses in the North Sydney LGA to reach out to us um, and we're happy to help at any time. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, thank you so much, Daniel. Um, I'm yeah, really excited about the um, Electrify um, <coughs> Cafes program and, and hopefully we can inspire some other cafes to, um, to make the switch as well. Um, ooh, so to um, Willoughby City, Peter, Peter Lyle. Hello, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, Peter Lyle here from Willoughby City Council, just following on from the Great Brains of Initiatives and discussion we just had with, um, with Green Guy and North Sydney. Uh, just an observation is that the BBP is, is, is one way of contacting your local council. There's a wide range of opportunities, workshops, incentives, um, advice available through your council officers if you choose to call your 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 call centres or even take down the individual details of the officers uh, presenting here today then we're always on hand to advise. Um, similar to Karingai and North Sydney you can see the scope and the um, the pie charts relating to community uh, gas emissions and and, and these the sectors uh, which um, create these emissions. Uh, Willoughby, we have a net zero target for the community. Uh, by 2040s or earlier, we have a 50% reduction um, in our community carbon footprint based on a 2008-2009 benchmark of 50% by 2028. At the moment, we've progressed around about 30% on that. The vast majority of those emissions reductions are based towards a greening of the grid. Um, but I, I suggest we shouldn't get too complacent about that because in New South Wales, we're still, we're still kind of like consuming about 70% of our main grid uh, electrical power comes from burning coal. So again, when we look at the, um, uh, the opportunities and the incentives provided by councils to, to, to electrify a lot of your services in, the, in your homes and also in your businesses, uh, this is, this is the, one of the main ways that in addition to the greening of the grid that we can affect our collective and individual carbon footprints. So I think what we're looking at now is a bit more of a focus from all councils into, into uh, making people personally aware of their carbon footprints and the ways that they can reduce their individual and their families and their businesses' um, carbon footprints. Uh, Amanda, next slide, please. 
So I'll just quickly mention the fact that we do have a, uh, a 2040s or earlier net to zero target for the community. It's it's basically quite hard for councils to influence this. Um, you know, we, we you know although we've heard a, fan, a fantastic array of different um, programs and incentives brought on by North Sydney and Karingai, Willoughby, we are reevaluating what we are offering the community at this stage. We hope to come out with far more direct intervention programs, maybe starting next financial year. Um, but what you have on the slide here is what we presently um, promote and these details are available through our websites. I would ask people to, to look through your council websites because that's where the most up-to-date information is um, and then if necessary you can contact your your local council directly or even come to our, our, you know all of us or your BBP officer directly. So what we have then we have a Live Well in Willoughby campaign which has been our education campaign uh, going for, 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 for many years. I've highlighted a few of the workshops coming up uh, all Electric Home on the 21st of September. There's an EV showcase in Chatswood, Chatswood Mall on the 8th of October. So if you're looking to uh, buy an EV or just to see how they work or even go and sit in one, um, you can you can go to Chatswood Mall on the 8th. And then we've got an Energy Efficiency for Renters webinar on the 26th of October. Um, there are, all of your councils have uh, sign-up opportunities and the BB, BBP does as well for our electronic newsletters. Uh, it's one great way of keeping up to date with what's going on in your local council. Other programs we have here in Willoughby include, obviously, we have a, a very successful solar PV battery bulk buy system. Basically, it's preferential rates. We've, we've um, identified one reputable installer. We, we review the install and the feedback and the customer surveys every quarter, so it's still continuing. Details of that particular opportunity are available on the Willoughby website. Okay, and to date we've been installing one extra uh, solar PV system per week. So it's been going about a year now. We've had about 60 systems installed across Willoughby. Okay, also we have free advice for homes and businesses. Doesn't matter what your size. I take on that responsibility for, um, for having to look at your electricity bills and offering, offering you advice and having a chat about your personal circumstances for homes and businesses. And then we do have a consultant available to provide specific advice if, um, if it's necessary. Okay, EV charging again, we have promoted both within council and outside of council our EV facilities. So there are 12 EV charging points provide, provided by council in the LGA. If you're ever interested to look at the, um, the provision of EV charging across the country, there's a, there's a website. The details are just shown on, 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 the, on your screen, plug share, and just look into Australia, then you can see how many um, EV charging points there are in your locality or even close to your home. And of course, council now, as well as the, the private sector, are rolling out uh, increasing amounts of EV charging. Uh, close to you. Um, council have a responsibility. So we are now looking at net zero by the 1st of July, 2025. It's a large focus on what we're doing. Council comprises about one, one and a half percent of the local, of the total carbon footprint for the LGA. Um, so, so what we are putting into practice now within council, the learnings from that are applicable across the LGA. Uh, but things are changing, changing quickly in, in, in the carbon, in, in the, in the carbon environment, I, I would say. Um, so keep up to date with the local council, see what's going on on the website. So if you do need any further details, then you can contact me directly, especially if you're in Willoughby. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks so much, Peter. And thank you uh, to each of our council representatives for such a comprehensive deep dive into your net zero plans and strategies. We're all just at the beginning of this journey, so I suspect more initiatives will come into play very soon and we'll let our audience know how they can uh, play a part in it. So um, we're running out of time, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. And uh, please put your questions um, into the q and I've got a couple uh, for our, our um, panellists, but um, we'd love to hear uh, what uh, you'd like to know more about. So uh, I just wanted to... Um, end with a little section on for our audience what is the pathway for our businesses to net zero um, and really you know it is about making those decisions in your business which reduce emissions and some of them can be quite uh, big decisions um, and um, and they don't come about day to day but it's keeping um, that front of mind and uh, the first point is you know changing if you haven't your superannuation and your banking because you, your dollar, your dollar um, definitely has um, power 
So what you're funding um, and the organisations that you bank with, what they're funding makes a huge impact. And, and we've seen some big changes in the last few years. So um, that's an easy one, hopefully, a bit of research and changing over. Uh, as we've heard today, going solar rooftop is, is definitely um, a very good way to reduce your emissions. Um, and if you don't have a rooftop to put solar on, hopefully there will be more opportunities for community solar, as Marnie was talking about. Reducing your business waste emissions, well, BBP, we um, are the experts in that. So come to us help, for um, help in that. Um, our program managers are, are very keen to help you reduce those emissions. We uh, will talk in a minute about electricity and green power, um, but uh, following on from what North Sydney is advocating, electrify everything, replace gas with electric. Uh, Saul, Dr. Saul Griffiths, um, I'll send out a link to one of his um, um, webinars, which really goes into this, uh, talking about rewiring Australia. Uh, he says to electrify everything and move to renewable energy, um, whether it's, you know, whichever order. Um, changing from fuel to electric vehicle when they become more available, hopefully, and more reasonably priced, which I believe is the tipping point, I think Saul Griffin said about 2025. So um, there should be some more vehicles coming onto the market soon. That's what I'm waiting for. And um, supporting suppliers who also aspire to be net zero. So those who are on that journey. <clears throat> sustainable purchasing and, and supporting those who are also reducing their emissions. Um, and lastly, um, carbon offset remaining emissions. So we'll have a little chat about that as well quickly. So this one, <clears throat> I'll send out links in the email, excuse me, <coughs> in the email following this. Um, obviously, energy efficiency is something that we can all address today. And we would love um, for our businesses to um, revisit that with their accreditations with our BBP program managers. Rooftop solar, so looking at the, uh, the little diagram, which I've um, uh, borrowed, um, sorry, without citation from the City of Sydney with a Go Green Power campaign, um, which is uh, a quite a recent one. Rooftop solar obviously trumps. Um, but then Green Power, which we mentioned a few times, it's an accredited program by the Australian government, which um, certifies that the power is 100% renewable. Um, so green power is the way to go. There are a couple of websites that we would recommend for you to look at. Green Electricity Guide, which is um, put out by Greenpeace, and Energy Made Easy, which is a website, um, a comparison website provided by the Australian government. Um, at the moment, as I'm sure you know, there are um, incredible um, ups and downs in the power market. So it's it's definitely worth having a look at um, and, and seeing what is available. Even a small percentage of green power, adding in a percentage of green power into your um, power purchases will make a difference. And then um, we encourage you to go up the grid, go up the scale. So carbon offsetting is a bit of a contentious um, issue. And I think there, you know, with a lot of our, um, uh, there's a lot of companies out there talking about carbon neutral, carbon offset, very, a very uh, valid um, uh, exercise. But, um, and I took this from um, a company called Trace, which is uh, a company which uh, helps with carbon offsetting. Um, it's not a silver bullet, but um, if it's used alongside a proper carbon reduction plan, so really reducing to net zero, then offsetting is an effective way of tackling any remaining unavoidable emissions. So often it's said that, you know, for a company just to not make any reductions and just offset um, is, is just to sort of maintain the status quo. Uh, we're obviously, and our councils are advocating the net zero approach to reduce first as, as much as you can and then offset um, where you can't. So I've got here just um, some other programs and resources, just, and I will send out some links um, in the email following. The City Switch program, which uh, 
Danielle mentioned um, in North Sydney, but is available to all tenant-based um, businesses. They're launching a Pathway to Net Zero program next week. So check out their website. There will be some um, really great materials that they, uh, that they release. We have um, offsetting advisory for SMEs. Um, so um, for small and medium enterprises needing assistance in, um, in how to tackle this, uh, this massive initiative. Um, Zero Emissions Sydney North, which is a volunteer program. Um, they are collaborating with quite a few um, councils in the Northern Sydney area, and they have some great um, materials, events and programs. You can volunteer with them um, to become more involved, and they're really involved at that community level. Karinga Net Champions, um, which uh, Marnie spoke to us about, um, I think there were 75 and they're often champing at the bit to start their own projects, um, supported by council, but not run by council, which is fantastic, the community taking action. And then Climate Active, have a look at that. Um, it is a program which does provide accreditation for businesses, schools, um, and households to become net zero. There is a, an online tool to measure um, and report out, as well as a whole lot of actions that you can undertake in order to um, get to net zero. So um, I'm going to close that off and have a look at the questions. Let's see. Okay, so we had one for Danielle, which seems to be answered. There was a one page sheet on the council website. Okay, so coming, coming in next financial year, I guess there's still quite a lot in the wings and being planned by our, our councils. So I just stop sharing so we can see everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, so I actually have a couple of questions um, and I know that all of the councils are either moving or have moved to renewable energy for their own operations. Um, my question is, where is that energy coming from? Is, is it green power or is it a solar farm? Where, where is the council's green electricity coming from? Marnie, are you coming off mute? Yeah, well, I think we were all part of a power purchase agreement recently. So the 100% um, the renewable energy that we're talking about for our grid sourced electricity is coming from three solar farms in regional New South Wales. Fantastic. Okay, um, so, uh, oh, we have one more. Um, so the question, is this the same for strata? Danielle, I think that's a question for you in um, relation to the- Yeah, yeah. so we will, our rebates and subsidies program that we're developing, will be for strata and businesses, yes. Okay, and that's all coming into um, financial year beginning 2023? Yeah. Yep. Right. And I'll probably add there, Amanda, that we also have rebates for strata as part okay. of the Guy suite of rebates as well. Um, I was concentrating on our business rebates, but they're available for strata if there's a, a Guy strata. Manager out yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. So there's definitely so many strata business, so many strata um, buildings in our in our LGAs. Um, on that, I wanted to ask about you know with the electrification strategy, um, will gas be allowed in new developments, and does this actually flow through into you know planning decisions in our LGAs? <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for North Sydney and probably for the other partner councils too, we do not wish to see gas in new developments. Um, however, our DCP has not been updated um, to reflect the, the changes that have been occurring in um, sus sus the sustainability field over the last few years. Um, so for us, we... Uh, we advocate for no gas to be put in new developments um, and North Sydney is actively trying to get all our sites, all our council sites off gas. Um, so new developments, absolutely we are advocating for no gas. Um, 
However, it's not in the DCP as yet. Um, so we are just trying to make suggestions to our planners to um, include these uh, sustainability provisions um, whilst they're uh, assessing um, DAs and things like that. Yeah. That would be a similar place for Karingai as well, is that it's not within our DCP. The avenue for, I guess, businesses or community advocating for that would be in DCP reviews and those going out to public exhibitions. So I know at Karingai we have a DCP review, development control plan review coming up, but same situation with Danielle, we would be advocating for it, but it's not presently within our current DCP. It, it, it's an interesting point about um, both domestic use of gas and also commercial or, or strata use of gas. Uh, I've, I've, I've just employed, I've, I've just reviewed a proposal by one of our, and, and, and this capacity is available through all councils if you choose to, to contact them, um, just, just to review a, P, a PV proposal in line with uh, uh, a changeover from a gas boiler, which is on its last legs over to using heat pump technology. So, so the two things are kind of about a three year payback in this particular for, for quite a substantial investment, but, but the paybacks are maybe more substantial, a lot, a, lot, a lot shorter than what you may anticipate, but you have to plan ahead quite often at home or even in any kind of uh, any business or, or facility. If things fail, then you need a quick response and quite often you go like for like. And if you're investing money capex into any form of um, hardware, um, quite often it, it's just the emergency overrides everything else about good planning decisions. So you have to be on the front foot. You have to look at the environmental impact. It's increasingly evident now with using gas, you know, the environmental aspects using of, 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 of fracking, for example, fugitive emissions. Um, gas is, is, is one of the fossil fuels that we have to phase out very quickly if we're going to meet our science-based targets of 1.5 and say within 1.5 degrees warming so um, a little bit of detail of, of what councils can provide and a bit of text um, context as to why we all need to act individually both um, um, on, on a household level and also a business level and personally as, as to change the way that we conduct our business and our lifestyles a bit of a um, Bit of an overview there, but uh, <laughs> I might also um, you will understand where I'm coming on, from. Yeah, yeah, pick up on a point that Danielle raised, which was around environmental upgrade agreements. So uh, some of these um, capital changes might be quite costly: solar, heat pumps, um, changes to HVAC. Um, environmental upgrade agreements, which are available. Um, to uh, the um, the building, uh, the commercial building owner um, is able to take out a, a environmental upgrade agreement with funding. Um, so our councils, um, Karingai um, and North Sydney, uh, Willoughby would need to work through, but um, the uh, funding is available through a third party um, and often those projects, those sustainable projects, can pay back very quickly and the, um, the funding is fixed for a long term. Um, it is connected to the, um, uh, to the title of the commercial property. So it suits businesses that own their commercial properties or businesses that have very long-term leases and have good relationships with their, um, with their landlords. But um, often these, these investments are going to really increase the value of the property. So um, that's uh, um, a good option if you're thinking about taking, undertaking any heat pumps or solar. Um, okay, I just check, I think that's the end. So um, thank you so much um, for joining me and uh, taking the time to take us through those plans. Um, it's really exciting. And I know BBP uh, really loves being part of um, and working with our partner council teams on these initiatives. So um, as always, BBP is your first point of call. We're our one-stop shop. We're not the experts, but we, we know who they are. So we can put you in touch with them. Um, and uh, next, um, our next webinar, I'll just take a minute to plug, is on um, the 5th of October and it's on responsible business. So uh, our better businesses, where to after accreditation as a better business? Well, um, responsible business, um, which is, uh, I suppose, um, uh, best represented by the B Corp status. We'll learn all about better businesses becoming B Corps, what's involved, what are the benefits, um, and we'll have some special guests 
uh, from our BBP network. Uh, we, we locked in Nicole from Sessions Hairdressing, um, Sasha from Tombag, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how we go with our other panellists. But um, thank you so much. I will close the webinar unless there's anything else. Thank you and see you next time. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Bye, all. Thank Bye. you.